Uh, now, going to Tripoli, Webster Griffin Tarpley uh, is our guest, the author of the unauthorized biography of George Herbert Walker Bush and Barack Obama, a doctor of history and an economist. Uh, Tarpley, uh, you, you let us know the day before you were leaving last week, but that we couldn't talk about it till you got into the country. We understand why. You've got a lot of courage, my friend. You're well-traveled. Why are you there? What are you witnessing in Tripoli uh, as the globalists admit, a top general admits to, to Congress, they're preparing for ground war? Well, I'm sort of on a uh, fact-finding mission, Alex. Thank you for having me on. Uh, the idea here is to come here and... Um and see what is actually happening. And uh, there have been a number of people coming through here. You've probably seen Cynthia McKinney, might have seen Wayne Madsen, a um, number of academics from the United States, people from other parts of the world have been invited. So there's a kind of a, a modest uh, flow of people uh, coming in to, to, to do a, essentially a fact-finding uh, mission. And uh, I, I think it's, these, these are things that people ought to be aware of. This is... Um, a very, very extreme case of imperialism, right? what you might call the New World Order. This, this is, the, in many ways, the leading edge of it. And I, I would just like to share some impressions, first of all, of what happens when you, when you get here. You, you can't come in uh, the normal way through an airplane or even through a boat. You could come from Italy by boat, but they won't let you, let, let you do that. They have a no-fly zone, so there's no commercial aircraft traffic, and even... The Libyan fishing boats along the Mediterranean coast are now being shot at by predator drones of the United States as they go out and try to try to provide some some fish for, for people's dinner tables. And the, the the food here is it's excellent, but it's it's very heavily based on uh, on fish. So what happens is you you drive in essentially, you drive across the uh, the Tunisian border usually, and the first thing you see is uh, there are these checkpoints every 5 to 10 kilometers. I think probably we went by maybe 40 or maybe even 50 of these checkpoints. And you're driving through the North African desert, right through the Libyan Maghreb desert in the night. The roads are filled with uh, heavy trucks because uh, there is commerce going on. These, these sanctions are not as, uh, as watertight as people think. And you come to these checkpoints, and this is partly the Libyan army, but they're, they're also supplemented by volunteers, and many of them are women volunteers, and quite a lot of them are black women volunteers. Uh, and what you could see is uh, Gaddafi has a, a very serious base of support, or maybe it's more accurate to say the Libyan government. He's now uh, handed out two million machine guns, grenade yeah, launchers, hand yeah, grenades, and, right. and when the U.S. NATO force rolls in there in October, it is going to be an absolute bloodbath. It, it, I think that's, that's very important, Alex. This, this is, is something that they've, they've told us about. They, they've essentially given one to two million Kalashnikovs, storm uh, these, these uh, assault rifles, as you mentioned, and uh, that's people's war. And if, if you really are a dictator, this is something you cannot do. If Gaddafi had, had been in reality what the U.S. propaganda says he is, why, well, as soon as everybody got those Kalashnikovs, that would have been the end of the current government. And instead, the... Well, Webster, they now admit, Amnesty admits, the State Department, no rape gangs with Viagra. They admit the baby incubator story was fake. It's the same group doing that. Uh, they admit he didn't run to, to Venezuela all those times. That was to destabilize. And they now admit, uh, the top admirals come out and admitted, yes, we're trying to kill Gaddafi. Well, obviously, when they're blowing up all of his houses and government buildings every time he's in them, obviously they're trying to do that. It, it, you know, they tell us it's not a war. It is a war. And, uh, and I meant to get the reports yesterday. I mentioned it. But even Reuters and AP are admitting that Congress has been told, yes, the ground forces are ready and are going to be needed. The troops have told us this for late September, early October. Uh, this is absolutely insane. But, but please continue from Libya telling us what you're seeing. Well, it, just in, in terms of this people's war, I, 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 would, I would warn everybody that the U.S. Or, or NATO or anybody's invasion of Libya is going to be an act of incalculable folly. And this is it is simply a gratuitous bloodbath. It's going to make Black even Hawk Down look like a picnic. A picnic. And e even with all of the bombing that has gone on for so, for, so far, what I'm amazed at is the, the, um, the, the placid attitude of the, of the Libyan people. Like, normally you'd think that a foreigner right, of, a, of a country that's bombing Libya, that you'd, you'd be lynched or you'd be in danger, and, and nothing could be farther from the truth. There's still a, 
a, a tremendous interest in people coming from abroad, and they're, they're grateful to have you to have you here. But now, an invasion is going to be very different. Uh, I'm talking to an ambassador, a, a distinguished older man, extremely cultured, perfect American, perfect French. Uh, you know, knows the ways of the world, and he said, "Well." Um, if the uh, if the invasion comes, he said, we in my household with my wife and my kids, uh, an extended family, we did a kind of a census, right? What we could do militarily, and he said, well, we figured we had enough RPGs to knock out about four tanks and enough um, ammunition and, and Kalashnikovs to uh, to take care of uh, I don't know what a couple of platoons, uh, and that's just one family. And remember. The, the Libyan population is 6 million, and it breaks down about 1 million are under this rebel council, under this, this gang of terrorists. Because They're they under the Al-Qaeda uh, Al command. Al -Qaeda. That's, it's what it is. And, and these, the, the rest of the, five, the other 5 million are loyal to the government and, and to, the, to the institutions that have been uh, really successful here in raising the standard of living from one of the lowest, right, rock bottom in Africa. But notice, Al-Qaeda used against the Russians, Al-Qaeda used against the Serbs, Al-Qaeda used against the Iranian Shiites. Uh, now they're putting in Al-Qaeda-backed Muslim Brotherhood people in Egypt. I, I mean, don't folks get it? And we're all a locky hanging out the Pentagon. Mutalab, right. the underwear bomber, gotten on the plane by the government. Al-Qaeda is a secret army of the private banking cartel. Right, it certainly is. And But, but in terms of what, what happens with Libya, the, the other thing about it is, uh, it, it is a tribal society, and, and as people talk about it, right, they, they say everyone is a member of, of one or the other of the tribes. Now, what that means, though, is that even if the government is de decapitated or these other things they're trying to do, that will not solve the problem for NATO because there is a ready-made combat organization which is available in the form of the tribes. And there is no way around this, no matter what you do, as long as anybody lives here at all... And you can't and buy them all off. On, and you can't buy them all off. No, you can't, because there's a very strong sense of nationalism. There's a devotion to having a united country. So I, I would simply urge people, if you look at that vote in the House of Representatives uh, last week, it was 238 to 180 uh, cut, uh, in, concerning cutting off the money. And it means that it lost. 238 voted for war. 180 voted for, for no money and no war. Now, that simply means if you could shift 30 votes from the war column into the peace column, you would cut off the, the funding. And I think that's worth, uh, worth a real try. Number one, if people are from the Tea Party or Republicans or conservative Democrats, they've got to realize this is al-Qaeda. The people that run Benghazi and Donna and Tobruk, those are terrorists. Those are veterans of of uh, Iraq and, and Afghanistan. The leader admits he killed Americans in Iraq, and, and we're unpatriotic because we don't support al-Qaeda, Webster. There we go. And the, um, the other one, though, is the, the, the massacre, the atrocities against black Africans, people from Mali or Somalia or Chad under the, under the rebel regime, that ought to be enough to move the entire black caucus out of the, the war, war column and into the peace column if they're not there already. And then there is this, this great man-made river, and the fact that when they talk about revolution, everybody in this country will say Gaddafi and his government, that's the revolution. I mean, that's the anti-colonial, anti-imperialist revolution that, that actually means something. Whereas these people in, in Benghazi, those are monarchists, those are religious obscurantists, <clears throat> they're the, the Muslim uh, Brotherhood. And, and, and Al Qaeda. Well, I mean, they so openly the want the old British monarchy, uh, uh, back monarchy group put put back in. Yes, and in fact, that's that's what they would do. So, uh, I, I think uh, militarily, the stuff you hear about about the progress of the rebels, this is simply nonsense. But I want to go back to those checkpoints in the night because I want people to understand: if you want to know where the front line of the fight of for civilization is. It's those Libyan soldiers, volunteers, women, many of them, standing out there in the night, knowing the only hope of those rebels is to get terrorists into the city of Tripoli, and they're going to have to get them through those checkpoints. And they're, they're not going to do very well because, they, again, there's a checkpoint every five or ten kilometers. And we were lucky. We, we got to go by because we had, we had you know, a little bit of uh, extra 
uh, you know, getting getting through some of these some of these checkpoints. But the uh, for for a lot of people, it's it's a, it's a laborious process, but they're willing to do it. And again, the support it seems to me is is virtually seamless. And nobody here is going to let NATO come in, and nobody here is going to let those those Benghazi tribes come in. A lot of those people in Benghazi turn out actually to be foreigners. They're from from Afghanistan or Pakistan or wherever they're from. They're from you know, Egypt. Some of them. It's from same Saudi old. Arabia. It's same old Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda. Now, 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 Webster. Their only hope then is to kill Gaddafi. Gaddafi knows that he's committed to stay. And I'm not saying he's an angel, but compared to Al Qaeda, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll pick. You know, compared to, to that, I think we'll take it uh, as, as a. As uh, a uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not for Al Qaeda, folks. I know that makes me un-American. I mean, for any real history, you know, our government created Al Qaeda, and I'm against it, so I'm anti-government. But uh, now, now, uh, Webster, their only hope is to kill Gaddafi, and, and and it's on. I mean, it's now in the news that they're telling Congress. Uh, behind closed doors, and it's come out in major newspapers that, yeah, the invasion is on September, October. They're going to call it a peace mission. That's also in the news. Uh, rolling the tanks in. I mean, and, and, and whether this was a good war or not, he didn't even go to Congress. At least Bush did that. This is high treason. And even Nadler, you know, the obese gun grabber uh, up in New York, has said Obama is becoming a king, an emperor. This is unacceptable. Uh, so this is anybody who believes in rule of law has got to be against this new war. Let me just comment on these attempts to kill uh, Gaddafi because I've, I've visited now Gaddafi's uh, compound, his villa, I guess you'd say, bombed out. What, what NATO seems to be using is, is these, are, these are kind of a projectile that divides into eight parts. It, it seems to be, it, it breaks up into it's eight. It's a cluster bomb. Individual. Yeah, but it's, it's something more than a cluster bomb because it, it's more heavy duty. Uh, and so it just, it's suitable to destroy you know, a, a, something about the size of a football field, but it, it destroys heavy buildings. Uh, I mean, it's not just a shrapnel fragmentation uh, device. So I've been in, in Gaddafi's uh, villa. Now, a couple of things about this. You go into the room where Gaddafi would uh, receive the, the visits of uh, African leaders, governments, heads, heads of state, and other you know, diplomatic events of state. And you look at this. This is not the palace of, uh, I don't know who. This, it looks like the... The rec room of a you know a comfortable upper middle class family, but there's nothing uh, you know bombastic about this. There's nothing super luxurious. I mean, there's no. The point is, he know, lives in a tent. Well, Webster, we got to go to break. Hard time. Uh, uh, absolutely, I want to come back here. The point is, he you know they say, oh look, he's got all this money. Yeah, he's sitting on gold, knowing that when he got invaded, he would be able to pay for things. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a totally illegal U.N. war backed by al-Qaeda, started by the West four months ago, a month before the uh, U.N. ridiculous resolution. Now the International Court of Criminals, they are the criminals, is saying arrest Gaddafi. And they're telling you this isn't a war as the ground troops are readied off the coast. From Tripoli, Webster Tarpley, Webster Tarpley, a little bit of the next hour with us. This is his first interview from Tripoli. He's been there for several days, he left late last week. Um, Webster, you've got the floor. Continue to break down what you're witnessing and what does it signify to have international criminal court, other people they grab, like Milosevic, it's on record, they poison. So you don't ever go to trial there. It's total kangaroo. You can't call witnesses. This is the private court of the private uh, bankers, and they're trying to get the Supreme Court to rule they can grab Americans whenever they want. Uh, and Obama's saying they are the boss now. He, he takes his orders from them, not from Congress. So this is just incredible. Webster. Yes. Uh, uh, break down what's happening. Continue. Sure. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the thing you see, uh, you, you go out uh, sometimes in the daytime or at night, and you hear the sound of these NATO aircraft up in the, up in the air, and you realize that they can uh, let fly at any time and that they're killing people uh, just about every day. Now, we've been l rather lucky here in Tripoli for the last three days we haven't had, as far as I can see, any big bombing here in the city. Uh, the bombing has been concentrated in Brega, out on the on the fighting front against these terrorists, you know, along the, the Mediterranean coast. But uh, they, they have a kind of an idea that four o'clock in the morning is the hour of the wolf, and that's when the NATO killers can strike.
strike, right? And there's absolutely no warning. And these projectiles break up into eight parts, and it destroys a compound. Another compound we visited was a, it's in a place called Sorman. If you look on the map, S O R M A N, 70 kilometers west of uh, Benghazi. I'm sorry, of, of Tripoli here. And this was the home of an important guy. And they were trying to kill him too. They tried to kill Gaddafi in his compound. One of the other generals that joined Gaddafi in the coup d'état of 1968-69 that overthrew the monarchy and created a modern state, because that's what this is, is a guy called al Khweldi Al-Khamedi. Al-Hamedi, sorry. al Khweldi Al-Khamedi. He's a general, and in, in this ruined compound of his, you can see a picture of him meeting with Egyptian President Nasser, right, back in the, back in the 60s. Presumably. So this is an, one, another one of the top people. And the, the NATO bombers were attempting to kill him. Just, it's, just, it, it's a policy of assassination, murder, mayhem, gratuitous killing. And, and this was, in, in some ways, the most heartbreaking, moving event I, I, I've seen in the trip so far. His son is a guy called um, Khalid al Khwaldi who's an engineer, trained in the United States, right, talks like an American, uh, speaks, you know, English as well as anybody. And what had happened to him was that his wife had been killed and his two children had been killed. Uh, his, one of his children was a, a four-year-old girl who was going to have her fifth birthday now on the 28th of June. Uh, another was a four-year-old boy. But Obama uh, brought them child. peace. Webster, hold on. Obama told the media last week, this is not a war. He brought peace to that four-year-old. He's a man of peace. Al-Qaeda is helping. How dare you be against... I mean, that four-year-old was... And another kid, another one of these little kids had just become... He just became six. His, his birthday had been four days before his death. There was one of their aunts. And then they had a Sudanese cook, an African guest worker in his life. So ten people killed... At about two, two to three o'clock in the morning, when NATO delivers their cowardly strikes from forty thousand feet against defenseless women and children, and the the the, the, the crowning uh, hypocrisy and depravity of this is, NATO claims that this compound was a military base. Well, I'm sorry, I walked around this. We looked in the rubble. Obviously, you don't want to get too close to the rubble because it's filled with depleted uranium. Oh, my gosh. Webster, you've got so much courage. Stay there. Webster Tarpley, journalist, investigative reporter, historian, economist, is in Tripoli. And he has visited the homes of families murdered, hit by the uh, demolition bombs. And he was just breaking down how they're using Twitter not only to foment these fake revolutions which the Pentagon admits they're doing, but also to target who to kill. That's how they get their new intelligence. They don't have the head of MI6 lie about WMDs, is, is now admitted. They just claim somebody Twittered. That's why CNN and Fox always say, oh, look, we're getting weather reports from people on Twitter, is to then kind of legitimize it. Well, Twitter said Gaddafi was roasting babies. Uh, please continue, Webster. Yeah, the, the way in which this, the targeting was done of this, of this compound in, in Sorman, where the 10 people were killed, the women and the four, I guess, four children killed. And it, it was because they're all in the family of this guy, uh, al Khweldi al, al, al Khamedi, uh, one, of, one of Gaddafi's top uh, colleagues, right? So the, the Revolutionary Command Council, or what, what that used to be. Uh, the way they seem to have done it, this is now the Libyan contention, clearly is that they, they had some infiltrated spotters who got up in a, in a, a local uh, sort of you know, microwave tower and they had some kind of handheld lasers and they spotted the roofs of these buildings and that's what guided the NATO bombs down to do the killing. And somehow tip-offs or, or information went over Twitter, say the Libyans. So that, maybe that puts this... This giddy new world of the social media in some kind of a different uh, light. So uh, I think this is just, it's horrifying, it's disgusting. Uh, as an American, you are confronted what this regime is doing in your name with your tax money. And I think it's, it's time to, uh, 
to do something about it, the very least anybody can do is, is there are going to be these, um, congr there's a congressional recess now for the 4th of July. These characters are going to be around, and you're just going to have to uh, go to them and say, look, uh, this, this war with Libya has to end. And normally the, the, the congressional comeback would be, well, we can't abandon our troops who are in harm's way. Well, in this case, the argument from Obama is there are no troops in harm's way, so, so there's no, no uh, you know, blackmail that can be done on this issue. You know, you're abandoning the troops, because Obama says there are no troops. There, there are troops, but uh, Obama claims that there are not. So um, that, I think, is, is uh, a tremendous... Wait a minute, are you challenging... Obama, this is not a war. This is a Nobel Peace Prize movement. Yeah. Uh, they admit it's killing a lot of women and children, but, but that's not civilian deaths. Uh, and you know what? Obama's a great guy. I mean, he's, he cares about us, uh, Webster. What we had is, is the, the, the U.N. resolution says the defense of civilians. Now, the, the NATO aircraft are acting in defense of armed terrorist gangs, and they are killing civilians in the process. Look, somebody who knows something about peace, a very interesting person to meet. This is the Bishop of Tripoli, Giovanni Martinelli. Um, and this is a guy who goes back and forth to the Vatican and, uh, and has talked to the Pope about this situation. And Martinelli, uh, you know, he, he's obviously horrified by the war. He says, you know, how can you expect to bring peace with, the, with bombs? And um, he also says, you have to realize Gaddafi has given full religious freedom. The Roman Catholic Church in Libya can act uh, perfect with perfect freedom. They have uh, nuns, they have hospitals, they have social services. It turns out there are a lot of immigrant workers here from the Philippines. The staffs of the hospitals, of which there are quite a few and actually quite good, are largely Filipino, and most of those are Catholic. So the, the Catholic community here used to be Italian, but now it's Filipino. Stay there. I want to hear. I want to hear about your intel on Western forces are there, quote, advising and helping with the peace. I want to get into that. I want to get into what the bishop said. The pope told him. I want to get into the fact that Italy is just last week said it's time to have a ceasefire and end this. Uh, and then we'll get into the economy. Stay with us. We've got the incredible news with the euro now going into free fall. Soros says there will be countries that exit. I want to talk to Tarpley about that in a moment. But it's so incredible, this is Webster's first interview since he got into Tripoli a few days ago. He's been unable. Uh, this was a secret mission. He didn't want to obviously be stopped trying to get over there. He's got a lot of courage, folks. Webster Griffin Tarpley speaks four or five languages, and he's in North Africa right now in Tripoli. And it's, uh, because of bombing, the cell phones were out until today. It's in the middle of the night. He's got a cold, but he's joining us. Uh, what do you make of uh, Congress saying, we don't authorize it, but here's the money? Uh, the Italians now shifting gears and saying, we now are against this war. It's time to stop. The Germans, as you know, a month and a half ago, pulled completely out. And then meanwhile, it's on Infowars.com. The British have now announced they're preparing to move forward with the ground force. Uh, they're moving ahead with their fake moral authority, having international court of criminals uh, who routinely kill people before they try them, whether they're guilty or innocent, like Milosevic, regardless of what you thought of Slobo. Uh, they're now issuing the arrest warrant. This is going into high gear, and a top general told Congress, yes, they're preparing to invade, but it'll be a peace force with heavy armor. So we've now entered actual 1984, and I guess as U.S. troops are coming home in body bags, they'll tell us that it's, it's uh, not a war uh, and that it's a kinetic action Webster. Well, I think if they really do take that path of, of, of absolute strategic insanity, they will face extravagant losses, their attack will break down with great loss, and they will be caught in the quagmire, which will uh, essentially be, be open-ended. And that maybe that will lead to the collapse of the Obama regime, uh, certainly might lead to the collapse of Sarkozy and Cameron and, and uh, the other people here in, in Europe. I, I think there's a, probably the best combination we've got in the United States to put an end to this. Again, move those 30 votes out of the war column and into the peace column, and it'll become even more illegal than it is now. And you might say, well, that's only the House. What can they do? They can't get it through the Senate. There is one thing the House can do, and that is to impeach. And uh, maybe that deserves to be brought up. Uh, Obama is in violation of the War Powers Act. That is a question of life and death. It's not Miss Lewinsky, and it's not any of this other minutia. 
but it's uh, life and death and war and peace. And uh, Obama really, really needs to be uh, impeached. And again, I, I would contrast the depravity of Obama with the very good sense of this Italian uh, bishop, Martinelli, who, uh, you know, he says bombs and Christianity don't mix. They're, they're incompatible. And that you cannot base human civilization in today's world on a policy of, of bombing. It's just insane. Well, look, bombs to defend yourself is one thing, but preemptive war. People ask how the Germans did what they did. Hitler had all sorts of fancy excuses and reasons to go into Danzig and then Poland and Czechoslovakia and then finally, uh, you know, into uh, France. And this is how this is done. This is how uh, wars start, and it's on record now. Even Democrats like Nadler and others, and Ron Paul has said, Obama, if he gets away with this, has turned the presidency into an imperial post, and there's no reason to even have a Congress uh, if this is the case. I mean, this is earth-shattering. This has never happened in U.S. history. I mean, this is, I mean, at least Bush, for his evil wars, got authorization, Webster. He, he went through the motions. Obama has been undoubtedly a step down, and I, I think you and I have been, you know, ahead of, ahead of that most most of the most of the time over the last three years. Um, the other well, Webster, though, you've been on target. In Obama deception, you said he's going to invade North Africa as a base to create a total destabilization continent wide. Obama deception calls it with total precision. People are now watching it and flipping out that it was made more than two years ago. Yeah. That's true, well, and and again, that, we just need to go from that to now to, to, to taking these actions to to shut it down. The other thing that's amazing, the NATO position, is that Sarkozy, this tin pot uh, dictator in his own right, depraved. Uh, the story of this guy could not be told without violating the FCC rules. Uh, they say they refuse to negotiate. They they the Libyan government says. Come and negotiate. We'll be glad to negotiate you, with you for, for you know, no preconditions. And the, the answer of the British and the French is no, no negotiations. And as, as the, the bishop here pointed out, dialogue is the daily bread of the Arab and the Bedouin. It is the characteristic feature of this civilization that there's a constant process of negotiating everything. It's uh, a, a kind of a deeply rooted cultural tendency. Uh, and instead, what NATO is saying is, no, we don't want any of that. Now, let me just, another scene, right? Well, another what they're saying is, your fate is sealed. We're going to come in and destroy your industrial base and carry out our soft kill genocide against you. And they're saying, you have no hope, we're coming. And that's going to form total resistance while a bunch of globalist Bilderberg group people sit around uh, playing God, destabilizing North Africa, Middle East, Central Asia, tr more troops building up in and around Pakistan. There's no doubt this is leading into World War III. Give us one more scene. Uh, this, the tableau, uh, the, the, a ship arrived in the harbor here in Tripoli yesterday. It's a beautiful harbor. It looks kind of like Baltimore, but much newer. And this is a city of more than two million people. It's the size of what? Almost Chicago. It's a very large and modern compared to Tunis. It's much more modern. And people that, uh, that, I've, that I've talked to here who have, you know, have been been here, you know, five years ago, ten years ago, are marveled by how many new buildings and, the, the, you know, the, the horizon is covered with cranes, buildings are going up everywhere. The, the oil money is being used, and, and I, you know, to a certain significant degree, it's being used widely, wisely. So here comes the ship. The ship is coming from Benghazi, and it's carrying refugees. What kind of refugees? Refugees fleeing the terrorist regime. People who don't want to be in Benghazi anymore, and they don't—they don't want to have any more any more grief with uh, with these terrorists. So they come into here, and uh, and they uh, you know they get off the ship. And here you got—I I saw you know the Washington Post, the Associated Press, uh, the whole media scrum was there. I saw the, the the woman who was the correspondent of the first program of French television comes in there, and she tries to find. A woman who's got an Islamic burqa on, right, with this, you know, complete coverage. And she, what she's trying to do is to say that it's those fundamentalists that leave Benghazi and come to be with, with Gaddafi, which is absolutely, it makes no sense. It's the reverse. So you're witnessing the, 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 the corporate media trying to frame it like, ooh, Al-Qaeda's with Gaddafi. 
They're trying to score points against Gaddafi any way they can, even if it's a total absurdity. And these press whores on the on this dock, uh, they they have nothing but contempt for the human suffering of the people on that boat who have been forced to flee. Well, they're home. horrible people that have sold their souls to be part of the system. They're the most vapid. I've met them. They're just vapid, gibbering, giggling yeah. scum who are going to have all their money taken by the bankers. Don't worry, you little servile snakes. Your masters are going to really give you some of the same stuff you're giving these North Africans. And so, therefore, uh, you know, it's time, it's time to put an end to the power of these, of these uh, little gerbils, right, these little uh, slime balls of the, of the press. And it's simply the spell is broken. Nobody can believe them. They're, they're, they're fools, buffoons. They're, they're just idiots. So I think it's, it's, this is pretty clear cut. Uh, there would be much more to say about the, 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 in, the dynamics of these terrorists and, and how they work. NATO is violating the U.N. resolutions like mad. They're flying in weapons. They have flown in a plane into western Libya with special weapons on board. They're trying to seize the area along the Tunisian border. They're, of course, operating in, uh, in the sort of the middle northern part of the country, uh, you know, especially from, from Benghazi towards, towards the west. Uh, this one, one top terrorist by the name of Hassadi, had been the boss of Darna, and he'd gotten himself into the world press, and they got embarrassed about him, so they shipped him out to Egypt, but they seem to have brought him back to Mizurata. Now, if you look at that battle in Mizurata, that is the site of the, one of the biggest steel mills in Africa, one of the biggest industrial plants in any Arab country. Watch Mizurata, and the, the Libyans are saying that they think that the, uh, the, the city of Mizurata, the rebels there, are going to get wiped out. But a couple of things about these, the terrorists. Inside this Benghazi rebel council, you have a rivalry. There are two people who are the, supposed to be the top military honchos. You have the guy called Yunus and this other guy called Hafter. Hafter was the one who was in northern Virginia. Yunus had been a minister in one of Gaddafi's uh, governments. So they fight about uh, precedence, right? Who's going to be the top, the top commander? And the way they do it, is you have a, a, a unit of rebels out in the field here, and then you know a couple of miles away you've got a unit commanded by uh, by Hafter. So Yunus has got his group, and Hafter's got their group. One of the ways that these NATO atrocities happen is the Hafter group calls in, and they call in NATO airstrikes on the Yunus group, both rebels, both terrorists, and the Yunus group does the same thing to the Hafter group. So one of the reasons NATO is killing the rebels is because one rebel group is getting NATO to bomb their rivals and their competition and getting them killed that way. And All right, shows. Webster, stop there. I want to leave Tripoli now and look to Europe and the United States in a short segment coming up. I want to look at the huge global financial meltdown that's happening. Webster Definitely also Europe. said they're not seeing the helicopters as promised. Only drone helicopters have been shot down because there are so many RPGs in the citizens' uh, hands. And again, dictators don't hand out RPGs and millions of Kalashnikovs to a population of 6 million. This is so outrageous. Uh, but they are going ahead with the ground war uh, because the globalists, uh, again, have to just sell the fact that they can do whatever they want, whenever they want. When do the Libyans believe the ground invasion is coming? Our confirmed intel is late September, early October, Webster. Uh, I, uh, this, this part of their thinking is maybe not so, so obvious. I mean... What, what we have tried to convey is the stuff that's in the public domain, thanks to your work and others, right? What is widely known is, is also known here. So I, I guess they would, they would converge on that. And, and in some ways, they, 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 they really wonder if the ruling elite of the United States is that insane. On the other hand, they've had plenty of lessons that they are that insane, that that kind of a fight forward is exactly what they're, what they're likely to do. There's a kind of a calm... Um, waiting going on, right? Saying we hope that they're not that insane, but if they really are, then we're pretty much ready. The people are organized, the, the tribes are mobilized, the, the system of, of uh, government by town meeting as, as one. Uh, what do they think of home? Obama now, the great peace god, lovingly um, giving them bombs? That, that is his. Uh, Basically, his his magic, right? His his deception act is is uh, finished, right? That that racket is over with, for about ninety nine percent. And the people, the people who uh, still want to give Obama the benefit of the doubt, have actually been defecting, as as uh, 
as one official here told us, he said, we had some rats in our government. We had rats that had gotten into the government over a period of 40 years. And one of the advantages of all this horror is that the rats are now gone. So there won't be any need to deal with the rats anymore. Okay, Webster, we're almost out of time. Shifting gears now. Um, Greece Deputy Prime Minister warns of tanks in the streets, mass suicides if second payoff to the bankers doesn't happen. He warns Greek Parliament. London Telegraph, Greek Minister warns of catastrophe if parliamentary revolt leads to austerity bill being blocked. Uh, continuing, European leaders prepare for Greek default. Uh, enter the dragon to save the euro. The Chinese are publicly saying how pathetic England is. Italy government tensions rise over austerity plans there. Uh, there's a threat to get rid of the U.S. AAA rating if they don't give trillions more to the bankers. So we're seeing the economic terrorism of the banking cartel if people don't raise taxes, cut benefits, and pay everything to the fraudsters. And now Soros is saying it looks like the euro may collapse. That's in Bloomberg. What does that mean, Webster Tarpley, in the three minutes we've got left? Well, again, the only way to make the dollar look good is to make the euro look very bad. And that's that the attack on the euro by U.S. hedge funds using credit default swaps has been going on now for more than a year and a half, getting to be almost uh, two years. Um, I, I would recommend for the Greeks uh, no more bailouts, no austerity program. Austerity doesn't work. Uh, that's what uh, Papandreou found. Well, it's meant to shut their economy down, and they've done the actuaries and say, if we do this, we'll never get out of the fraudulent debt that you created. So it, it's, exactly. it's, it's third worldum they're delivering to them. And therefore, what they need is a debt moratorium. They need to declare an immediate unilateral freeze on all payments of debt, principal, and interest uh, with the goal of reducing it by, you know, the maximum amount possible. If they can get it, you know, minus 90%, they should do that. But the only way you can successfully negotiate with a banker is to put yourself on an equal footing. Uh, these bankers are, of course, zombie bankers. The irony of the whole thing is that those bankers themselves are more bankrupt than Greece. And the people that get the bailout is not going to Greece. No Greek gets any money out of this. It goes to the Deutsche Bank, 50 billion euros, the French banks, 30 billion euros, and the British banks, maybe 20 billion euros. So this complete monstrosity. There's nothing wrong with the Greeks. They were simply victimized by a cabal of hedge funds with Soros and the rest of them using credit default swaps. And they now admit that it's going to move on to Italy, Portugal, England, the United States, and, and it's, as you, it's a black hole. There's no way to ever pay it back, but it consolidates right. power for the criminals, so they're rampaging it's forward. A physical, it's a physical impossibility to pay it back, so why not just face the physical impossibility and say, there's no point in ruining the country trying to do something that is prima facie impossible. Therefore, we're, we're essentially going to freeze this debt with a view to canceling it at the earliest possible opportunity. Well, Webster, we want, to commend, we, want to, we want to commend your amazing courage. Uh, they're now admitting that we never came out of the recession, so the truth is starting to dawn here. You're in Tripoli. Uh, go with God. Be safe. We appreciate you there being a uh, reporter and somebody to observe the reality of what happened. And uh, be safe, Webster. Hopefully you can pop back in with us again tomorrow. Precisely. That's what I'd hope to do. Let's try to find a couple, you know, a little slot and we'll give you an update. All right, Tarpley. Let's see what happens tonight. Maybe NATO will come back tonight at the hour of the wolf. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tarpley.net. Stay with us.